Hello, it's Dara, and I'm a gender therapist who just had surgery, and I am answering questions today. Um, I'm going to make a few different videos because I went on Facebook, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, and I asked what kind of questions do you have about the surgery I had, and I had a lot of really, um, really good questions asked, and I feel like they can be broken up into different categories, so I didn't want to drone on for like an hour and potentially lose your interest, so I'm going to stick with, in this video, the surgery itself and my recovery. Okay, so let's just, let me get one thing clear because I know there's still some confusion about what kind of surgery I got. So the surgery uh, is medically called reduction mammoplasty. It's also known as a breast reduction surgery. I did not get top surgery. So I did not get a male chest, male chest, because people who are non-binary can also get top surgery. Um, but it's called, uh, sometimes it's called uh, chest reconstruction. I did not get a mastectomy either, which would just be a completely flat chest both breasts removed. I got a breast reduction and um, two reasons why this is what I got. The first reason is because um, I had dense areas of fibroglandular tissue that needed to be removed. Um, that tissue can uh, increase the risk for breast cancer and not to mention it's really uncomfortable. My surgeon said it's like having boulders in your boobs. Like it just makes things um, uncomfortable, not only in your breasts, but like for your shoulders and your back, things like that. The other reason I got this done is because um, I am non-binary, which basically what you need to know is that I don't identify strongly with my assigned gender of birth which is female. And one of the, the, actually I would say it's the number one thing that causes me gender dysphoria, which means I have distress between that assigned gender of birth of female and my true gender identity of non-binary was my chest. And now I can say past tense was my chest because um, that surgery obviously has helped um, reduce my gender dysphoria because now my chest is at a size that I am comfortable with. I'm gonna talk more about that though in a different video, but I just wanted to clarify what surgery I got. The reason I wanted to say that is because I'm gonna tell you about my surgery and my recovery, but if you have, or somebody you know, has top surgery planned or a mastectomy planned, from what I understand, I think my surgery is not as invasive as those. So you might wanna take what I'm saying and add a little bit more time, a little bit more pain to it. And again, everybody's different how their body heals. I'm just letting you know what I know about it. Um, I made some notes, excuse me. So, okay, <clears throat> before I talk about, um, especially my recovery, I just wanna make sure I reiterate that um, if you're gonna be having any kind of surgery in the future, whether it's gender related or otherwise, getting into a place of good health is really, really important. Um, I, first of all, five years ago, I started eating more um, along the paleo sort of way of eating. So my body, you know, by no means am I perfect at it, but my body was um, fairly healthy and ready for surgery because of the types of food that I choose not to put in my body. Um, I also ended up um, having uh, the couple of weeks leading up to the surgery, I was especially careful about what I was eating or uh, vitamins, things like that. I did a lot of research on the internet myself, um, figuring out what it is that was good to do in that respect. And I got probably a little obsessive, but that's just what I do. And I think in the end it paid off because I am doing so well in my recovery. Um, so I just want to reiterate, and I don't mean to sound like I'm lecturing you, but seriously, if you have a surgery coming up and you have time to prepare your body for it, whether, you know, through both food, diet, and exercise, that's going to really, really, really help. Um, okay, so the surgery itself uh, was only an hour and a half long, and I say only because from what I understand, that's pretty short. Um, they removed 2.5 pounds of breast tissue. And I, I think I, I think I recovered for maybe an hour and a half, maybe le it felt really quick to me. Like, you know, you're given anesthesia and then you wake up and you're like, oh, time to go home. Um, 
so yeah, I was in and out of the surgery center pretty quickly. My wife, um, obviously somebody else drove me home. And I mean, I felt well enough for us to go through the Starbucks drive through and I treated myself to a little something afterwards. Um, and then I spent the rest of that week resting and which meant, yes, like I did sit on in a recliner and I watched Netflix, um, but I did make sure it was really nice outside. So I made sure that we went for walks. My wife went with me in case I like got dizzy or something, but it was fine. We went for short walks at first and then I was able to increase the length of the walk. We have a used treadmill at home that I also walked on to make sure, because the doctor said that was so important to just keep your body moving as you're recovering from surgery. Um, so by Thanksgiving, which was day four of my surgery, I had I was no longer taking um, pain meds. And I'll be honest, like I didn't really feel any pain. I shouldn't say any pain because I did take Tylenol with codeine um, the first couple of days and that probably did help me with the pain but like I um, let the time frame go by during which I was supposed to take my next dose and I honestly I didn't really feel anything. I also am somebody who has gotten tattoos so eh, maybe that is my pain scale is like eh, this doesn't hurt at all and maybe it would hurt somebody else I don't know. Um, but again, you know, the type of surgery I got is different than top surgery, different than a mastectomy, and it's different than even somebody who has breast reduction surgery who maybe started off larger than I did. So, and mentioning again, being in good health going into surgery. So, I mean, I know that's probably, probably sounds really uninteresting and uneventful, but that was my recovery. Um, you know, of course, like I think the, the thing was about lifting my arms. Like at first I kind of just did this. If I needed something, I had to get my wife to like reach across the table to get it for me. And every day I was able to get a little bit more. And now at this point I'd say this feels comfortable, but I'm not going to go any further than that. Like the trunk of my um, car, like it's like a kind of an SUV thing. And so it was too high for me to pull down. So I had to make sure that I um, didn't open the trunk until I'm fully recovered, uh, which the surgeon said about four more weeks from now, I can go back to my normal activity. For me, I mean, obviously I'm back at work, um, I'm driving, I'm doing a lot of things I normally do. The two things that um, are gonna be hardest for me not to do during this time is exercise. Well, I can walk and I can do some like moderate exercise, but I can't do Zumba. I really like doing Zumba. And I wanted to start um, running. Now that my chest is smaller, I think I will really actually enjoy running. I wanted to start doing some yoga and some weights, you know, just kind of like, hey, I got a new body. I'm gonna now take care better care of it. But I can't do that for another four weeks. It's just gonna be too hard post-surgery to do that um and the other thing oh my energy like i just have to really pay attention to my energy like i feel great right now it's the middle of the day but you know as i kind of go towards the evening i'm seeing clients all day um you know i have to like really recognize that i'm not going to be able to like just then go to the gym and then drive an hour home and then or go out with friends like i need to be able to like chill and rest. So um, yesterday I overexerted myself a little bit because the, my chest got swollen by the end of the day and it was actually really uncomfortable. And the surgeon said that's because I, uh, my body was telling me that I overexerted myself. So that's, a, that's, I mean, I'm, you know, that's not really a huge thing to complain about because otherwise I'm doing really well with the recovery. Oh, I was gonna show you a couple things that help all right, so this is called Arnica. I don't know if it'll be backwards or not. Um, this is good for bruising. This stuff is called First Intention, and I got it from my naturopath. Um, it's got <clears throat> a lot of vitamins in it, but also has bromelain, bromelain, citrus, bioflavonoids, and some other zinc, things like that. And then this is bone broth. You can make it yourself or you can be lazy like me and buy it. Um, and this is really good for healing as well. Um, I'm gonna mention this real quick, but I will talk more about it later, that when it came to 
like buying stuff like this for my surgery for right now my wife and i we just decided we're going to put it on a credit card we put it on our lowest interest credit card that got the most points and it's kind of like we took out a loan for ourselves to pay for stuff um, this is not related to paying for surgery my surgery was covered by insurance since um, i had the fibroglandular tissue thing going on that needed to be removed um, i did have a rather large copay that um, we are taking out a loan from my dad, um, hashtag blessed, so that I can be able to um, pay him off over time for that. But, you know, if this is something you need to do and you have the, um, the benefit of having a credit card with a little bit of room on it, especially if it's a lower interest card, we just decided that so we wouldn't have to worry about that. Just go ahead and put that on there. And then every month we're going to do little bits at a time to pay it off. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Um, so I think I brushed over pain pretty quickly, but, uh, oh no, I talked about pain because I talked about tattoos and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think discomfort is more to describe how I've been feeling. And it's mainly cause I've been wearing a post-surgical, um, binder and it's really tight and compressed, like, and you know, and you're just healing. And so it's kind of like your wounds are like, ow. Um, today I went to my surgeon and he took out the sutures and he said, I don't have to wear this 24 seven, but I think, you know, he said it's a good idea to do it for a little while. Cause I want to protect my wounds a little bit longer. Um, and it does kind of keep everything in place. He did say I can go out and buy a new sports bra or binder, whatever I want. Um, so I think I'll, you know, maybe take a look at a store and see what I can find. That'll be kind of fun to see what's going to fit me now. Um, I didn't have very much bruising. There was like a day or two where you could see yellow <clears throat> coming up, but that Arnica stuff that I showed you, I think that really helped. I don't know. I guess it did because I really didn't bruise that much. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I covered what I wanted to cover. That has to do with the surgery. It had to do with my recovery. Um, but I am going to talk more about some nuances about things like that. So if you have questions that I didn't answer about the surgery or recovery, you can put them in the YouTube comments and I'm just going to keep doing these little you know, videos. I'm not going to edit them. That way I can just upload, get it out there real quick and continue to share with you what's happened. But I also want to hear your stories because um, that was really cool. If you don't follow me on Facebook, make sure you do because I post questions on there. You can look for me, Dara Hoffman Fox, um, and actually send me a friend request. I'll accept your friend request. And you also follow my page, Conversations with a Gender Therapist. So I'll um, make another video really soon and just keep talking about surgery. And I'm really glad you guys are interested in learning more about um, what this is like, even though my surgery might be different than one you're going to have, it gives you an idea of what you can, should think about and how you should take care of yourself um, as you're leading up to it and then in the days after your surgery. So, okay, I'll talk to you soon.